Hi guys, Nadia here and today I'm going to talk about the Kingston A2000 NVMe SSD that I have right here. Now when it comes to the SSD market, uh, Samsung was usually the brand that is the most dominant there, but they have one weakness and that is the pricing. So if you take the 970 EVO Plus for example, a one terabyte version, it costs $200 or 200 euros, while this Kingston SSD costs $130 or euros and that is a huge, huge difference. Especially if you consider the fact that this is barely over the price of a one terabyte SATA SSD. So in this review, I'm going to see if there's a catch, if there's something wrong with this SSD, or is it completely fine and worth considering for your next gaming rig or a workstation. Let's go! This video is brought to you by the new Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. It features a stunning 4K OLED display and a second 4K touchscreen, making it the ultimate productivity laptop. Now with the latest Intel Core processors and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060, it can handle any creative task and you can even game on it. Check it out using the links in the description below. On the surface, the Kingston A2000 doesn't really look special. I do wish they had opted for a black PCB, however, as the bright blue just makes it look cheaper for no good reason. I know that for most builds you will never even see it, but if you are planning a sleek build with an SSD in view, you should keep this in mind. I do like that all components are on the top side, so if you have a motherboard with an M2 shield, it will touch all of them, even though heat is not really a concern for this drive. Before I dive into performance, there are a few basic things to keep in mind. First, uh, some of the cheapest NVMe drives on the market use a 4-bit QLC flash memory, while the A2000, like most high-end drives, uses more durable and consistently better performing 3-bit TLC memory. I'm not going to have any QLC NVMe SSDs included in my test results here, but I can tell you those are objectively inferior. The A2000 also comes with hardware encryption, which the previous model, A1000, didn't have, and it has a 5-year warranty, which is pretty much now a standard for NVMe SSDs, and I would say anything less than that is just unacceptable. Uh, the A2000 also comes with a software package, but I do have to say it looks a bit basic and a bit cheap, and they maybe should invest in making it look a bit more modern, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna be an issue, and I don't think people will mind it when picking an SSD on a budget. But what is important is the performance, and when I look at the performance, I'm gonna be focusing on three major aspects. First is, how does it handle a lot of big files, like photos and videos? How does it handle a lot of small, small files? And the most important one, how does it handle mixed practical usage like Photoshop, gaming, etc. The A2000 looks like it has one main weakness over the more expensive options, and that is when transferring really big files, the peak read and write speeds cap out at a little over 2000 megabytes per second, where some of the faster drives manage 3000 to 3500. While this is a big difference, it is important to remember that these speeds are only possible when you transfer files from one really fast SSD to the next. So, if all you do is copy them to an external USB SSD or over a gigabit network, the A2000 will not be a bottleneck. Now, more importantly is how it handles really small files, and that's where the cheaper A2000 ends up really close to the top of the market. It writes large amount of small data, about as well as the 970 EVO Plus, and it even outperforms it and other high-end competition in the small block read test, which is basically what your SSD will be doing most of the time. As a result, in practical use cases like Photoshop and some games, which is what this PC Mark 8 benchmark does, it shows it can really handle itself as well as any higher-end drive. And of course, absolutely crushes the SATA alternatives. Meaning that as a gamer or a casual creator, for example, spending more on your storage really doesn't make much sense. So if you plan on transferring huge data sets between two fast NVMe drives or something crazy like that, then the weak peak performance might be something you should consider. But keep in mind, those are very niche cases. For majority of you, this SSD is going to give you a proper NVMe experience at SATA pricing. So it's actually really something you should consider. Your PC is gonna feel fast, uh, your games are gonna boot up fast, uh, the software applications are gonna work smoothly. Just make sure you keep an eye on the pricing of the other SSDs I had in my graphs, especially the Western Digital Black Corsair MP510 and the Seagate Firecuda because those are also very viable options uh, if the price is right. 
Now, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this review and about this SSD. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and see you in the next one. Bye!